Hello everybody, this is Valencia and welcome to my channel, Balloons in Business, where I show you the business of balloon and event decor. So today I'm going to show you how I made this autumn-like themed balloon garland. And this will be great for a lot of different themes, like a bee theme, mama to bee or bride to bee, or a little pumpkins on its way, or a barnyard theme. Just so many awesome ways you can use this garland. And I didn't just make this garland one way, I made it two ways. So I'm gonna show you the step-by-step -step process that I used to make both of these methods. And hopefully I'll be able to answer some of the questions that you guys had in the comment section regarding how I make my balloon garlands. So if you wanna see how I made this, just stay tuned. So the balloons that I used was a Mustard Yellow by Sempertex, Latte by Sempertex, and White Sand by Calisan. Now, if you check the description box below this video, I will give you more details on the sizes and the number of balloons that I used for this garland. Just a note, I was originally narrating the video as I was filming it. However, for the sake of sound quality, I decided to do a voiceover instead. So I'm gonna start by taking two balloons and blowing them up on my electric balloon pump. And then I am going to round these balloons out by taking one hand and pressing the top while releasing air from the bottom. And I'm doing this to give them a round shape and also to make sure that they're not overinflated so that I can manipulate and maneuver these balloons. So now I'm gonna tie these into dupes by crossing the necks of the balloons, wrapping one of the necks over, tying it under and through just like a shoelace and making sure I leave enough slack at the neck. So again, underinflating the balloons is important, especially if you're having an outside event because the outside air causes the latex in the balloons to expand. If the balloons are overinflated, they have no room to expand and they will pop. Also having underinflated balloons makes the balloons more flexible to be used when you're twisting them and tying them together into your balloon garland. So now that I've tied my balloons into dupes, I'm gonna twist them together into small clusters. And I'm twisting these balloons together into clusters of six dupes, which is a total of 12 balloons. Make sure that you double twist these balloons into the cluster, because if you only twist those dupes in there once, they are known to pop out when you're trying to like manipulate them. So twist them in there twice to make sure they're in there nice and secure. The technique that I'm using is color blocking, meaning that all of the balloons in each cluster are of the same color. So now I'm gonna connect these clusters together by taking one neck from one balloon in one cluster and one neck from another balloon in another cluster and tying them together. This is why I said it's important to leave enough slack at the necks because you wanna make it nice and easy for you to grab a neck inside of those clusters, stretch it out long enough in order to tie it to the other neck in the other cluster. Now when you're first doing this, this can be difficult. It takes practice and it takes time. But the more and more you do it, the easier it will become. Right now I'm showing you in real time, meaning I did not speed this part right here up, how quickly I'm able to twist these dupes into a cluster of six or 12 balloons total, and then tie this cluster to the balloon garland with the necks of the balloons. As you can see, this process literally took me less than a minute to do because I've done it so many times before. And now that I've gotten the base of my balloon garland made, I'm gonna be taking this backdrop clamp that I got off of Amazon. You can see uh, the link to that in the description box. And I'm gonna take a 260 balloon, which you use to make balloon animals out of, and I'm gonna double tie it into the mouth of that backdrop clamp, leaving two ends out. Then I'm gonna clamp that onto my wood wall. And then I'm gonna take one end of the 260 and wrap it around the balloon garland. Then take the other end of the 260 and wrap it around the other side of the balloon garland. 
And then I'm going to tie the two ends of the two 60s together inside of the balloon garland. And that's how I'm connecting it to my backdrop. And I'm going to be connecting it at at least four points on this backdrop. One at the top there, the mid and the bottom on the side, and one all the way at the other end across. Now what I decided to do was to add a couple more clusters to this balloon garland to make it go up and across. I originally was gonna just do it up and down, but I'm gonna do up and across. So I'm just tying the necks of the balloons together just like I did before, and then securing that top portion with the backdrop clamp. So now I'm gonna be adding some clusters to my balloon garland because I want it to touch the floor. You see there's a gap right there. So I'm gonna add that cluster right there by tying the necks of the balloons together. And then I'm gonna be adding some more dupes by simply twisting them into the balloon garland. Now I'm adding this 24 inch balloon using the neck of that balloon. I'm just taking the neck and I'm tying it to another neck of a balloon already in the balloon garland. Now I don't want that 24 inch balloon to just be sticking out like that. So I'm gonna be twisting some more dupes into the clusters above and below it to make it look like the 24 inch is embedded in the balloon garland. Also decided to twist some more dupes into that bottom portion where the mustard yellow is to really stretch that bottom part out. I wanted the bottom part to look like it's going down and out. Again, I'm twisting dupes into the clusters to make it look like the larger balloons are embedded inside of the garland and not just poking out. So now I'm adding a cluster of five inch decorators to the balloon garland using a 260 balloon that I cut in half. I tie one end around one cluster and then wrap the other end around the balloon in the balloon garland, tying that 260 into itself. And that is how I'm adding my five inch clusters. You can also tie two five inch clusters on each end of one full 260 balloon and then wrap that 260 around two times for each cluster. You wanna make sure you wrap it around twice because if you only do it once, it may pop out of the balloon garland. So I'm just adding my five inch clusters in there wherever I need to fill in gaps and to add more visual interest. Having various sizes of balloons is important for making your balloon garland look more complex and heightened. So now I'm adding these faux sunflowers to the balloon garland and these are from Hobby Lobby. They have a sale every two to three weeks, I'm not sure, but they're 50% off and they have great quality faux florals. Now, if you wanted to make this um, bunch shorter, you can cut the ends, but make sure you add a balloon on the end so that those wires won't cut the balloon garland. But if you're not gonna do that, you can just slide them right on in where you see space and just make sure you space them out so they're nice and even throughout the garland. I also decided to add a few white bunches of flowers in here as well. I'm also adding some pumpkin grass and I'm gonna put a balloon at the bottom of the stem so they won't pop the balloons. And this is just your time to use your creativity to you know, put these wherever you wanna put them. So here's the finished product for my first balloon garland. This is the L shape, okay? Now, if you didn't want this shape and you wanted to switch it up, you could do different shapes and stuff like that. And I've been exploring my shapes with my balloon garlands, but this is the standard L-shaped balloon garland that a lot of clients ask for. So I wanted to show you how to do it this way. Um, if you wanted to change up the shape, you definitely can. Um, that's part of being a balloon designer, right? You're using your creativity to, you know, do the balloon garland any way that you want to. So if you decide to change up the shape like I did, I took all of the florals and everything out and I wanted this balloon garland to kind of go across the backdrop um, in a diagonal motion. It's not gonna be exactly diagonal, it's gonna be, you know, kind of going across in a wave-like motion. 
So what I did was I removed that uh, white sand cluster because it was too long to go across. And then I reclipped this garland back on the backdrop. And I only needed three clips for uh, this style. One at the very top right, one at the mid left, and one all the way at the bottom left. I took some of those five inch balloons from the white cluster I removed and you know made sure that I filled in the balloon garland so you don't see those gaps up there. And now I'm going to be adding you know my florals and uh, pompous grass to give a new look to this balloon garland. So just something I wanted to mention, I actually made this backdrop. It's actually a faux wood wall. It's a plywood board that's six and a half feet tall by four feet wide. And I put some vinyl wood panels on there. So it looks like wood panels, but it's not really. And I did that because it's easier to transport because wood panels are so heavy. So if you wanna know how to make this, I will be posting a video of that soon. So here's the finished product to the second balloon garland that I did. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And if you did, go ahead on and like this video and please subscribe and you'll get notifications on future videos on balloon and event decor. And also I wanna know which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comment section which one you prefer. And until next time, I will see you guys later. Tried and true.